Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by and checking out this video. It's great to be back. I've been on a break for a little bit, but I've been excited to get back into these boxes and do some more of these challenges. And today we're going to be doing a medium box called Mayhem. This one at the time of recording just came out a couple of days ago. And down here we got our little intro to it. We got a button to download the task files, which I've already downloaded. And do make a note of this just in case you have a browser that doesn't like the file. I've already got it downloaded. I've got it extracted. And when I saw it was a PCAP file, and I went back and I read this, my first thought is we're going to be dealing with something with the Havoc framework. Now, if you don't know what the Havoc framework is, it's a really, really interesting tool. And I'm going to, of course, leave links to everything down below. Here's the GitHub page for it. As you can see here, it says the modern, malleable, post-exploitation command control framework. What's nice is that they actually made this publicly available. And so you can take this, set it up on your own machines, test your own systems to make sure things are set up right. They can detect these type of things and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. How do you get started if you don't already know what the Havoc framework is? Well, you can take this PCAP file and come over to Virus Total. I'll leave a link to this. Now on the home page, you can drop the file in and it will take a look at it. And you'll get to this page here. And honestly, just down here, as soon as I would see that, I would start looking for this. But if you come over here to the Community tab, because you see there's some comments here. You see here where this person Thor who left some information. If you keep scrolling. Down here you see this comment right here, and they actually give a link to the Havoc GitHub, which is what I've got here. So if you don't know what the framework is, that's usually a good place to start when you got a PCAP file and you're trying to figure out what you're dealing with. Just come over to Virus Total, drop it, and see what information it can give you. Once I knew I was working with Havoc and I verified it, I went to go dig and look for an article that I used previously on another challenge, and I managed to find it. And of course, I will leave a link to this as well. And there's two bits in this that are going to be extremely helpful. This right here on how to look at the hex values in Wireshark. And one of the big giveaways if it's the Havoc framework is this dead beef right here, this magic bot header. And then the other thing here is when you go to decrypt it, this tells you that it's using the AES, specifically the CTR. And that's going to be very important when we get to decrypting. But I'll come back here because we're going to use this and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to look at this in Wireshark using it. Speaking of which, here is that PCAP file in Wireshark. Now, there is a lot of packets in here. So how do you navigate through this and try to find what you're looking for? In the article, remember the, oh my gosh, I hate it when it does that. It says dead beef right here, right? So one thing to do is come to edit, go to find packet. You want to set hex value and you want to set this to dead beef and hit find. Okay, that's going to narrow the amount of packets that you've got. And now this next part just kind of comes with experience. We don't really want to look at these in blue. There's not too much information there. The biggest thing is going to be these green ones. Like you see here, we got this green git and notepad.exe. And if we look through here, we don't see the dead beef. But we come down here, we've got more of these greens. we got more of the communication back and forth between the servers. We will start recognizing patterns down here. Now, the biggest thing that I always look at first is your protocols, what's being used. You can see we got TCP connections and we've got HTTP connections. Now, TCP, if you're not familiar with the network stack, basically for the most part it's just going to be used to make sure that machines can still talk to each other so typically if i see this mixed in with a bunch of stuff it may be important i may have circled back around to it but i typically like to just knock it out and since i know that http is the only other protocol in here i'm just going to type it in there and hit enter so now you got to see we've got it cleaned up a bit there all right ironically we are on packet 182 which that's actually the packet we are going to start with because the first question is what is the SID of the user that the attacker is executing everything under. So in order to find that, we're first going to have to crack how to read these packages and see the information in them. Now we are at the top of the list of packets here, and basically the first thing we want to go and do is find the first packet that actually has that dead beef in it. And that ends up being this packet number 182 here. You see dead beef right here. Sorry if it's a little small. There we go. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to see. So what do we do with this? Well, let's take a note of a couple of things. First off, this is a communication from IP38 to IP37, and this is a post. So off the bat, I'm gonna guess this is from the client to the C2 server. So we can come over here. We're going to copy as hex stream. And at first, we're going to want to drop this in a notepad or a text editor because we're going to look at this and break this down real quick 
using this method. So here, like I pointed out before, so the dead beef is our magic byte header and the eight bits in front of it, or four, however you really want to read this. I go by how many are there, so it's eight, is a length field. So if we come over to our notepad here and we simply do control F, find the word dead. We see that it is right over here. We're going to hit the left arrow to go back. We want to do eight digits, or four bytes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can just get rid of that. So then breaking it down per the article, we know that that's our length, that is our magic bits, and then we skip to, and then we have our agent ID, and our agent ID, and then the next part is a little tricky. It just jumps over these, goes straight to where the AES key starts. So if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means we're going to skip 16 digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We hit enter. So now we are at the start of our key. Now the key's pretty much going to be the same length and majority of challenges you come across that use a Havoc framework. So I'm going to save you from counting. It is 32 long. So that means we have 64 that we need to skip and that will give us our key. So now this is going to be our key. And the next bit of information is the IV key. But if you scroll down here and you take a look, it's a 16-bit key that we're looking for, or 32 in this case. So we just count 32. So this is our key, this is our IV, and this is our data that we want to decode. So now what do we do with this? Well, come over to our good friend, CyberChef. We'll take our key, drop that in there. We'll take our IV, drop it in there. Make sure mode is set to CTR. And don't worry about this, we'll get to that in just a minute. And then we can take our data, copy it, drop it in, and there we go. We can see and got the name of the machine, the user, client server.thm, IP address of our client, and that it is putting, it is, looks like it's going to run notepad.exe from the downloads folder. So that's how we're going to start decrypting these packets. So now moving on to find that SI. So basically you'll want to step through and just kind of look at each of these packets one by one. Now one thing you're going to notice, and this is the thing about blue teaming is recognizing patterns, right? If you see we get this from our client 38 to server 37 and it's only 74. And if you look, we don't have any data information down here. Then we get this 182 from the server back to the client and its length is only 12. And we see this repeats. And it's only when we have something that's actually being transmitted, like up here, that the value is going to be different. But as you can see, the length here is 74 from the client and 182 from the server. And this just bounces back and forth. There's nothing really going on here until we come down. We hit this packet. That looks a little different. As you can see, we do have some data there. So if we copy it and copy value, remember this has come from 37, come back over here to Wireshark, we'll drop this in, we do need to do an offset for the header. Now, what is the header and how long is it? Well, if you remember in the other ones here, the 182, we had a length of 12. So basically that's going to be your key of your header chunk, and you just double that, so that's going to be 24. So then we just activate this, set the length to 24, scroll down here, and here we go. We got username, SID, so this is some information being sent back and forth. So we look at the next packet. Now notice this one's coming from the client to the server. And on these, we want to come over here and grab the hex stream. Come back over here to this. There we go. Paste that in. And now here is a really interesting trick when you're reading this. If you'll, you will want to find where the word dead beef is. And in this case, with my setup, it's gonna be right here. Now every time I pull in a hex string from the client, dead beef's gonna be in the same spot. Now with this set to 24, if I take from dead beef all the way to the beginning out, it will convert it and we can see our information. And we have the answer to question one, of course that's gonna be blurred out. Okay, I'm gonna go over the next one with you. What is the local link IPv6 address of the server? Enter the answer exactly as you see it. Now, you see from that packet, we're just going back to the 182 to 174. So I'll tell you what, let's highlight this one, this packet number 239, and let's clean this up a bit so we don't have as much to look at. So we'll go here, do double amber stand, and we want to do frame dot lint does not equal 182, double amber stand, frame dot lint does not equal, exclamation point equals if you don't know what that is, 74. 
and this will get rid of the packets that we don't need. So you see, we still got that packet 239 we just looked at highlighted, and now we got all those extra packets out of the way. So now you can literally just go down packet by packet, paying attention to what the source IP is, and you can just come over here, copy the value, come back over here, drop it in, let it do its thing. You see here, the server is sending the command, it wants to run IP config. So we come here, the client responds, We'll grab the hex stream, paste that in, find our dead beef, get rid of it, and we see that the command did execute. Come back here, this is from the client to the server again, so we'll grab the hex stream, get rid of our header with the dead beef in it, and there we go. We've got the result of the IP config command. So for the rest of the questions, that's literally all you have to do is just go down and just take your time. And with these filters, you have far less packets to look through, and you'll be able to find the other answers as long as you take your time you pay attention to which one is the source. Why that matters, as you see from the client to the server, we don't have a data information down here, right? We just got media type. But if we go from the server to the client, you see we have a data down here. The reason why we're grabbing from the data over here is because that's the actual stuff we want to translate. There is no dead beef in this, so we can't copy the whole thing and have a single point where we can just delete and get our translation. So it's much easier to copy it from the value of the data field. So that's why you definitely want to pay attention to what the source IP is as you're going through. Simply follow this method going back and forth with each packet and you can find all of the answers you need for the rest of the questions. So I hope, hope this video helps you out. Good luck on finishing the rest of this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I will we'll do my best to answer. And if you're someone in the community who sees a question and you feel like you can answer it, by all means, go ahead and do it. So with that, I hope everyone has a great day and I'll see you next time.